What does it mean to prepare for success while you're going through the toughest time in your life? It means that you you can't wait for somebody else to change your life for you. You can't wait for defense attorneys. You can't wait for policymakers in Washington, D.C. or legislators or, or anyone else. You've got to say, this is my commitment to work toward reaching my highest potential regardless of what challenges I'm facing. I've got to get up. I've got to make things happen. And that's why we work at Prison Professors to try and help people craft their own way. In fact, our motto is we teach people how to teach themselves. Not only justice impacted people before they go in, but while they are in prison. And we never ask anyone to do anything that we didn't do. So one of the exciting projects that we're working on right now is Prison Professors Talent, where we are giving that pathway and showing individuals who are locked in jails and prisons, how to start memorializing a pathway showing that they are committed to building extraordinary and compelling adjustment strategies. So let's shift my window over to the website right now and let me read the type of, of coursework that, um, that, we, that we send into prisons through different email channels or through DVDs. This is an example of a journal entry, and today is the 4th of July. It is Independence Day, and uh, we, you know, I'm, I'm up early and trying to work. So let me go ahead and read this, this uh, lesson plan so that we'll show you how we try to teach people in prison. Today's Tuesday, July the 4th, 2023, and we are writing about the importance of journaling. If we measure productivity daily, we can better turn our aspirations into reality. While serving 9,500 days, I journaled as a tactic to stay on course. Writing out my thoughts and recording how I am working toward my aspiration gives me clarity and creates a record. I use the journals to persuade others that my success doesn't happen by accident. Instead, I follow the same principles that I use to prepare for success after prison and that I teach through our course, preparing for success after prison. Those principles follow. Number one, define success as the best possible outcome. Number two, create a plan. Number three, identify priorities. Number four, build tools, tactics, and resources. Number five, create accountability tools to measure progress. Number six, adjust the plan as necessary. And number seven, execute the plan every day, even on the 4th of July. As I approached the end of my prison term, I had thousands of pages of journals. They recorded my goals at the start of the year, my daily progress, the books I read, the systematic ways I worked to build a supportive network, and detailed progress on the tools, tactics, and resources I created. The journal itself became one of those assets that I would leverage. I used the journal to advocate for the highest level of liberty as soon as possible. And when I served my sentence between 1987 and 2013, we had different laws and policies. Mechanisms did not exist for people to advance release dates. For that reason, I set goals to advocate for change. There were a lot of strategies I could have used to advocate for change, some more effective than others. One method would be to complain a lot. I could whine about the unfairness in the system or argue that a judge shouldn't have given me so much time or that the prison system didn't do anything to rehabilitate me. That method seemed to be very popular in prison, complaining. I wanted to try a more effective strategy. To succeed, I needed a plan. I would have to build a coalition of influential people. If I could persuade those people to believe in me, they could join my advocacy efforts. I couldn't wish influential people into my strategy. Instead, I needed to prioritize my actions. Those who have read my book, Earning Freedom, know the priorities I set would include, number one, working to earn academic credentials. If I committed to personal development and education, others would know that I didn't want to be a criminal. Those credentials would help me convert my aspiration into reality. Two, I could find ways to contribute to society in meaningful, measurable ways. If I learned to write more persuasively, I would create publishing opportunities. If I published, I could communicate at scale, reaching thousands of people with a few hours of work. Building a supportive network of influential people. By striving to bring others into my life, I increased the likelihood of opening opportunities. Journaling helped me to stay on track as I prepared for success after prison. And it's one of the reasons that our course, Preparing for Success After Prison, emphasizes this tactic. 
we encourage people to memorialize their commitment to pursuing excellence. Since I never ask anyone to do anything that I don't do and that I'm not doing today, I began distributing these daily journals to members of our community. I published the journals live on my prisonprofessorstalent.com website. We built Prison Professors Talent to teach people in jails and prisons how to teach themselves. It's part of our advocacy strategy of persuading administrators, business owners, citizens, and others to expand programs that will allow people in prison to earn increasing levels of liberty through merit. We are building campaigns that will persuade administrators to support work release programs for people in federal prison, furloughs for people in federal prison, meaningful access to compassionate release and commutations, and reinstatement of the U.S. Parole Commission. We hope more imprisoned people will join our efforts by memorializing their preparations for success. They built their profile on Prison Professors Talent by sending an invite to interns at prisonprofessorstalent.com. We accept all invites, and our fabulous intern, Aliyah, Director of Ad Advocacy and a senior at American University, will follow up with the next steps. We hope participants will start by journaling. And that is just part of our strategy is journaling. We try and show all kinds of ways that people can plan to build something better. Because we know that a challenge with the criminal justice system is really leading to the loss of hope. It is a crisis. It is a time of crisis for people inside. And it's super important for people to begin thinking about what can I do? How can I sow seeds? Do I just wait for my defense attorney to sow those plans for me? Or can I, is there something I can do to start building my own path? And that's what I learned. I learned you got to define success. You got to set a plan. You got to put priorities in place. You've got to build your tools, tactics, and resources and execute that plan. And you could see how I do that if you just, you know, scour or, or rather research through the site and, and look at how I was planning very early in my journey and those plans all related to what the goals that I set, which is to, to, to really lobby legislators and lobby administrators uh, for the need for both policy change and um, uh, legislative change so that more people can, can, can move toward an earlier release at the soonest possible time. Our belief is that if a person has a place to live and a job, that person is far better situated outside in the community and the Bureau of Prisons is certainly capable of, of monitoring those people as, as evidence as we learned through the COVID era. So my name is Michael Santos. I'm the founder of Prison Investors. We believe in you. We would love it if you joined our community and became a voice, a transparent and vocal voice for showing how you are worthy of, uh, uh, of an earlier transition to society. I'm Michael Santos. I believe in you. Thank you.